Planet of Evil is the second serial of the 13th season of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who. It was first broadcast in four weekly parts on BBC One from 27 September to 18 October 1975. The serial is set on and above the planet Zeta Minor, the last planet in the known universe, more than 30,000 years in the future. In the serial, the Marestran geologist Sorensen Frederick Jaeger seeks to exploit the antimatter minerals on the planet to use as a power source for his own planet when he and the military mission looking for him are attacked by a creature from a universe of antimatter. Plot <inaudible> 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 The TARDIS picks up a distress call and the Doctor and Sarah arrive on the planet Zeta Minor. There they discover that a Marestran geological expedition has fallen prey to an unseen killer and only the leader, Professor Sorensen, remains alive. A military mission from Marestra has also arrived to investigate. At first they suspect the Doctor and Sarah of responsibility for the deaths of the expedition members, but the culprit is eventually revealed to be a creature from a universe of antimatter, retaliating for the removal by Sorensen of some antimatter samples from around the pit that acts as an interface between the two universes. The Morastrons take off in their ship, but it is slowly dragged back towards the planet due to the antimatter on board. Sorensen himself becomes infected by antimatter and gradually transforms into an antimon, a monster capable of draining the life from others. The Marestran commander, the increasingly unhinged Salomar, attacks Sorensen with a radiation source, but this only causes him to produce multiple antimatter versions of Sorensen which soon overrun the ship. The Doctor finds the original Sorensen, takes him back to the planet in the TARDIS and throws both him and his samples into the pit, fulfilling a bargain he earlier made with the anti-matter creature. Sorensen reappears unharmed, and the Doctor returns him to the Marestran ship, which is now freed of the planet's influence. <laughs> Outside references. The Doctor quotes from Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet, and says that he met William Shakespeare once. Production The plot was deliberately conceived by Philip Hinchcliffe, Robert Holmes and Lewis Marx as a mixture of the film Forbidden Planet and the novella The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. In addition, Marx had been reading science magazine articles about antimatter, and decided to write a story incorporating the subject. Hinchcliffe, in the first season in which he could commission new material, planned to move away from the "'rubber-suited alien' theme, which he felt was cliched. For this story he proposed having three separate monstrous elements, Sorensen's transformation, the antimatter monster and finally the planet itself, claimed by Sorensen in Episode 1 to be conscious of his group's motives. Despite the jungle setting of this serial, the shoot was entirely studio-bound, and designer Roger Murray Leach built an intricately detailed jungle set. The BBC was so impressed with it that they kept photographs of it for several years as an example of excellent set design and producer Philip Hinchcliffe recommended that he be nominated for an award for this work. The original script had Sorensen dying after falling into the pit, but Hinchcliffe ordered that this be changed, as he felt it would too grim an ending for the little ones and because he saw Sorensen as a victim of the planet's influence rather than an evil man in himself. Instead, a scene was added in which Sorensen is released from the pit and cured of his anti-matter contamination. The most visible reference to Forbidden Planet is the anti-matter monster Mike Lee Lane, which is sometimes invisible and otherwise is seen as red outlines. It bears a close resemblance to the films. Creature from the ID. 
The monster is invisible in the filmed sections of the serial where a wind machine was used to show its progress, and as outlines in the video sections created with color separation overlay. The ship main cabin set was reused in the fourth Doctor story The Robots of Death 1977. Topic. Cast notes This is the final appearance by Michael Wisher in Doctor Who. Prentice Hancock made his third appearance, having previously appeared in Spearhead from Space 1970 and Planet of the Daleks 1973. He would later appear in the Rebo's Operation 1978. Frederick Jaeger, Professor Sorensen, and Ewan Solon, Vishinsky, both previously appeared in The Savages, 1966, in which they played Jano and Chal, respectively. Louis Mahoney, Ponty, had previously appeared in Frontier in Space, 1973, and would later appear in Blink, 2007. Graham Western Dehan had also previously appeared in Patrick Troughton's final serial The War Games 1969. Topic Broadcast and reception The story was repeated across four consecutive evenings on BBC One from 5 to 8 July 1976, with a start time varying between 6.20 p.m. and 6.35 p.m. It was the first story since Spearhead from Space to be repeated in its entirety on BBC TV and the first ever to be stripped across consecutive evenings. The viewing figures were 5.0, 5.0, 4.3 and 3.9 million viewers, respectively. Paul Cornell, Martin Day and Keith Topping wrote of the serial in the Discontinuity Guide 1995. For an eight-year-old, this was the most terrifying slice of Who. Now it seems a little ordinary, a simple reworking of classic themes. It is unfortunate that the detailed jungle set is in such sharp contrast to the cheap minimalism of the Marestran spaceship. In the Television Companion 1998, David J. Howe and Stephen James Walker described Planet of Evil as a wonderfully creepy story with the borrowing of material from Jekyll and Hyde done with such style and panache that the viewer, far from complaining about a lack of originality, delights in spotting all the familiar sources to which the writer and the production team are paying homage. They also noted that the antimatter monster, depicted only as a shimmering red outline, was, in all but name, the ID monster from the 1956 MGM feature film Forbidden Planet. Howe and Walker also praised the jungle set and the performances of Frederick Jaeger and Ewan Solon, but criticized Prentice Hancock's poor portrayal of Salomar. Ray Dexter's assessment of Planet of Evil also acknowledged the influence of the 1956 film. Forbidden Planet, which inspired the writers to include an invisible, murderous monster, as well as elements of Jekyll and Hyde. Reviewing the serial in 1999, literary critic John Kenneth Muir drew attention to similarities between Planet of Evil and Ridley Scott's 1979 film, Alien, in particular the scenario of a spaceship answering a distress call, the crew being gradually killed by a malevolent alien life form, and corpses being ejected into space in metal coffins. Muir hesitated to suggest that Alien was directly influenced by this story, but, nevertheless, considered it significant that Doctor Who dealt with science fiction themes that became popular later in the 1970s. In 2010, Patrick Mulkern of Radio Times wrote that the serial feels original, particularly praising the jungle set and David Maloney's direction, as well as Tom Baker's performance. Topic. Commercial releases Topic. In print A novelization of this serial, written by Terence Dix, was published by Target Books in July 1977 as Doctor Who and the Planet of Evil. Topic. 
VHS and DVD release Planet of Evil was released on VHS in February 1994, and on DVD on 15 October 2007. This serial was also released as part of the Doctor Who DVD files in issue 94 on 8 August 2012.